brilliant performance, a good season and a, and a good manager as well, Darren. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to say first and foremost, well played Wolves. I know Manchester United were awful, but Wolves I thought were outstanding, kept possession really well, went to Old Trafford, showed no fear. Uh, kept possession of the ball I thought the wing backs were, were crucial Samedo I thought was brilliant mm. so you'd have to say first and foremost well played Wolves yeah but secondly Manchester United were just were terrible just playing in mm. ones and twos no real game plan everyone keeps talking about this 4-2-2-2 two, 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 when it's just 4-4-2 four, four, and you can see against you could see quite evidently last night that when you play that formation it just doesn't work against the three because Samedo and the, and the other full back just had the freedom I mean Samada was running forward every single time he got possession of the ball so um, yeah it, w- it wasn't a good advert for Manchester United last night I thought it showed weak management as well from Ralph Ranić taking off Greenwood because mm. I thought he was their most attacking lively player I thought oh he might get them sank out of this game but for me that was an easy option to take him off he didn't want to take upset Cavani he didn't want to take off Ronaldo so who else can I take off okay I'll take off Greenwood and I thought that was the wrong decision they booed as well didn't they I'm not surprised he looked mm. like the one who could get a goal he was lively he was working back because by the way him and Sancho were having to work incredibly hard to try and get out to the wing backs but I thought Greenwood was playing really well and to take him off I just thought what, what, what are you trying to achieve here here's some of the things that um, some of the ex-legends or some of the current legends have said about it Gary Neville tweeted it's not good it really isn't Rio Ferdinand Marcus's body language Marcus Rashford's no. body language is an issue um, Paul Ince was talking about the manager being there at the end of the season um, and he says you've got to say no even though it's early doors um, we kind of didn't think that anyway because he's interim so what <laughs> In terms of where they are in the league table as well, Darren, and what they need to get out of this, um, he also said, Ralph Ranić said, it feels a long way off now to get top four. What do you think? Well, it's not a long way off, but they're just not in any great form to warrant them getting into that top four. Arsenal playing well, played really well against City, although they left with nothing. Spurs mm. at the minute under Conte are rampant going up the league. They're not even playing mm. that well, but they're still picking up results, and that's what you can do. If you can grind out results when you're not playing well, eventually for Spurs, they will start playing well and moving up the league. So, But when you look at... And uh, Rio Ferdinand's got a point, because I can remember when you played Manchester United, certainly back when they were really successful, you used to stand in the tunnel, and every single one of their players used to stand there with their chest out, and you'd go, oof, like, they wanted to carry that, that burden of wearing mm. that Manchester United shirt, like wear it with pride it's almost like this Manchester United team it's like they're scared to wear their shirt and it's even like when they're getting taken off for substitutions it's like they can't get off the pitch quick enough it's like and even Marcus Rashford at the minute he just looks like he's got the world on his shoulders like he's thinking about everything else other than football it just it's at the minute for Manchester United I'm, I'm quite sure what direction they're going in what about Phil Jones because he hasn't played for 700 days played or well. so and um, me and Ali were talking about this this morning the professionalism to keep your body in a certain way even though you're not playing games to then go and put in a performance like that was um, I thought quite impressive really really impressive because he would have been out there he's been hearing the noise he's heard some of his teammates back him which I like saying that he's, he's taken stick which is a bit unjustified and he would have known full well a lot of people were looking to make him a meme last night go out there make a mistake laugh yeah. at him do you know what I mean make him to do something I thought he went out there. I thought he played really well. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have tried to say about the goal. Maybe the clearance wasn't great, but I wouldn't call that a mistake. It was just no. Matino picked up the pieces and finished it off. But I thought he played exceptionally well, considering he hasn't played for two years. I thought he, he was he was very, very good. Comfortable in possession, defended well. I think he can be proud of his performance. He's one of the players that can be proud of his performance. We were also discussing, weren't we, Ali, the, the comments that Luke Shaw made about how they were lacking motivation um, yeah. and lacking togetherness. He said they, we weren't together. It's too easy for Wolves. Um, and he's been criticised a little bit for those words about lacking motivation um, and needing more. Because as players, isn't that something that you should have, is the motivation to go onto the pitch to win a game? Of course. So when you play for that football club in that arena, surely if that doesn't get you up for football, I don't know what will, because that is, that's still one of the most iconic stadiums in football. When you play for the, arguably the biggest club in the world, the motivational kind of line that he gave there, that's not, that's not a good look. And that doesn't yep. fall on Ralph Ranić. That falls on the players. They're the ones who've got to get motivated. But you can see kind of a little, not even a divide, but I look at the, some of the players' body languages and it's almost like, You've got half the t- It's like you've got some of the players looking at other players thinking, well, it doesn't really matter how he plays, he's always going to play. But it doesn't matter how well I play, I'm always going to be the one that's sacrificed. And I think you can quite clearly see that. You know, Ronaldo, he's been made captain. It doesn't matter how he's going to play, he's always going to play. And then you've got the likes of Mason Greenwood, who's given it absolutely everything, by the way. And Jaden Sancho, who's trying to rediscover his form, mm. just not getting a, a fair crack at it. What did Manchester do? Because the manager that they've got in at the moment, he's not going anywhere for the moment, is he? He's no. going to be taking them to the end of the season. Um, They've got to sort something out because this could be disastrous for them if it keeps going like this. Yeah, they need to they need to find a little bit of consistency. But 
I think and I thought Ralph Ranick was the man to do that, but he's going to have to make some big decisions because there's, there's players in there. I mean, he did to be fair leaving Bruno out, and I thought Bruno came on, made a, a real difference. Hit the crossbar, didn't he? Hit the crossbar when mm-hmm. he should have scored. But I think he's going to have to make some big decisions, and that might be the likes of he might have to take Ronaldo out at times, put him back in, or Cavani. He's going to have to keep trying to mix it up. He can't just be in, keep being predictable. All right, the team's not playing well. All right, who's who can I use as a scapegoat? Oh, there they are, the young boys. Take off Mason Greenwood. Ah, oh, Sancho. Yeah, I'll take him off. You can't keep doing that because eventually you've got to stick with it and start making some big decisions. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you think, Bentia. Yeah. With Mickey Gray on earlier on at seven o'clock, turned the game last night, which was fine. But looking at the bigger picture, and I, I tend to agree with him. I can't see United, no matter who the coach is, mate, with that group of players, I can't see them making the jump to all of a sudden next season or even the year after challenging Man City or Liverpool. I I, I just think they're, they're miles off it, mate. Yeah, I'm with you, Ali. I'm, I think they're miles off it as well. And they're going to have to, it's almost like they have to rebuild again. And I know there was this kind of big, and I was one of them saying that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, like he had to go, he wasn't good enough, he wasn't up to the job. I think in this short space of time, it's shown that Ralph Ranić may not up to the job either because have you seen any improvement, Sally, from when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer left to now? Because no, I really, haven't. Bente, no. In answer to your question, I've got to be honest and say, no, I totally agree with you. It's very much, you know, it's same old, same old. And I just think that... It's a, and it's an incredible thing to say about a team Manchester United. They look as though they're lacking in confidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, you're, you're absolutely right about, for, for example, Rashford. I don't know what's happened there. Gene you, Sancho, you know, he, he, he's trying to get this, you know, consistent run going. He can't seem to get it. Greenwood, there's definitely a willingness. You know, there's definitely a willingness with guys like McTominay. Yeah. However, there's just... It's just not right. I don't know whether it's the blend, the shape, the. I mean, this four-two-two-two, whatever it is. I mean, that's it's not for me to be honest with you. And I thought, particularly in the wide areas, Wolves last night were excellent. I thought they were excellent as well. And as you said, there the four-two-two-two, and even the way they press. I know it was a lot about Raf Rangnick and when he comes in, he wanted to press. But even when they press, now they don't even press as a team. You, you look at a team like Manchester City and Liverpool. And even Chelsea, to a certain extent, you can see that they're well coached in terms of how to win the ball back, get it back as quick as possible. Mm. When Manchester United try and press, it's just to appease the fans. I don't think it's actually to win the ball back. It's like, let me show the fans that I am trying to work hard. I am trying to win it back when I've got absolutely no chance of getting the ball back.